All right, guys and gals, gonna do a story here. Dr. Seuss, of course, sorry, told you, if you don't tell me something else to do, it's what I'm gonna do. Yertle the Turtle. I love Yertle, it's a good story. I don't really know if I like Yertle. We'll see, but it's a really good story. Also, forgot to say in the announcement, see if you can figure out where I'm at. Somewhere, somewhere at stars, who knows. Here we go, Yertle the Turtle. On the faraway island of Salamisand, Yertle the turtle was king of the pond. A nice little pond. It was clean. It was neat. The water was warm. There was plenty to eat. The turtles had everything turtles might need, and they were all happy. Quite happy indeed. They were until Yertle, the king of them all, decided the kingdom he ruled was too small. I'm ruler, said Yertle, of all that I see, but I don't see enough. That's the trouble with me. With this stone for a throne, I look down on my pond, but I cannot look down on the places beyond. This throne that I sit on is too, too low down. It ought to be higher, he said with a frown. If I could sit high, how much greater I'd be. What a king I'd be ruler of all that I see. Hmm, this dude wants to be ruler. Oh, where? We'll see. So Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand, and Yertle the Turtle King gave a command. He ordered, ordered nine turtles to swim to his stone, and using these turtles, he built a new throne. He made each turtle stand on other in another one's back, and he piled them all up in a nine turtle stack. That's a lot of turtles. And then Yertle climbed up. He sat down on the pile. What a wonderful view. He could see almost a mile. I don't know about Yertle, like I said. It's just like climbing up on people's backs. All mine, Yertle cried. Oh, the things now I rule. I'm king of a cow. I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house. And what's more beyond that, I'm king of a blueberry bush and a cat. I'm Yertle the turtle. And marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. Hmm. Hmm. He seems to like himself a lot. And all through that morning he sat there up high, saying over and over, a great king am I, until long about noon. Then he heard a faint sigh. What's that? snapped the king, and he looked down the stack, and he saw at the bottom a turtle named Mac, just a part of his throne. Just a part of his throne, really? That's a rude way to think about Mac. And this plain little turtle looked up and he said, Beg your pardon, King Girdle, I've pains in my back and my shoulders and knees. How long must we stand here, your majesty, please? See, Max down here. He's like, dude, come on, help me out. <laughs> Silence! The king of the turtles barked back. I'm king and you're only a turtle named Mac. You stay in your place while I sit here and rule. I'm king of a cow and I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house and a bush and a car. But that's not it. I'll do better than that. My throne shall be higher. His royal voice thundered. So pile up more turtles. I want about 200. 200? See, he's mad. He's like, Mac, you can't be talking. You're at the bottom of the stack. Turtles, more turtles, he bellowed and brayed. And the turtles way down in the pond were afraid. They trembled, they shook, but they came. They obeyed from all over the pond. They came swimming by dozens, whole families of turtles with uncles and cousins, and all of them stepped on the head of poor Mac. One after another, they climbed up the stack. Look at these turtles. And poor Mac. Also, Yertle can be happy with himself. If you have to step on someone's head to make yourself happy, just saying, you might, you might have a problem. Then Yertle the turtle was perched up so high he could see 40 miles from his throne in the sky. Hooray, shouted Yertle. I'm king of the trees. I'm king of the birds. I'm king of the bees. I'm king of the butterflies. King of the air. Ah, oh, me, what a throne. What a wonderful chair. I'm Yertle the turtle, a marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. You think it's all about Yertle or what? I don't know what you guys think. I wonder how many of you like Yertle. Probably not many. You're good kids. Then again from below, when the great heavy stack came a groan from the plain little turtle named Mac. Your Majesty, please. I don't like to complain, but down here below we're feeling great pain. I know up on top you're seeing great sights. But down on the bottom we too should have rights. We turtles can't stand it. Our shells will all crack. Besides, we need food. We're starving, groaned Mac. All right, prediction. How do we think Yertle's going to handle this commentary from Mac? You hush up your mouth! That's how. How the mighty King Yertle 
You've no right to talk to the world's highest turtle. I rule from the clouds, over land, over sea. There's nothing, no nothing, that's higher than me. He rules because he's so high up on the other turtles. Hmm, I wonder. Hmm, the same. See, he's mad. I don't like when Matt talks, I guess. But while he was shouting, he saw with surprise that the moon of the evening was starting to rise up over his head in the darkening skies. Whoa, what's that, snorted Yertle? Say, what is that thing that dares to be higher than Yertle the king? All right. He's getting frustrated with the moon, basically, at this point. Just saying. I shall not allow it. I'll go higher still. I'll build my throne higher. I can and I will. I'll call some more turtles. I'll stack them to heaven. I need about 5,607. Got some good math going on there. He knows exactly how many turtles it's going to take to get to the moon. I don't think so. But as Yertle the turtle lifted his hand and started to order and give the command, that plain little turtle below on the stack, that plain little turtle whose name was just Mac, decided he'd taken enough, and he had. And that plain little lad got a little bit mad. So that little turtle, Mac, on the bottom, who the king said doesn't, hey, you ain't got no skills. That's what he's saying. Not good language. English, I mean. Mac got mad. And that plain little Mac did a plain little thing. He burped. <laughs> And his burp shook the throne of the king. So one little dude at the bottom did one little thing to the almighty king. And what happened? And Yertle, the turtle, the king of the trees, the king of the air and the birds and the bees, the king of a house and a cow and a mule. Well, that was the end of King Turtles, of the turtle king's rule. For Yertle, the king of Salamasan, fell off his high throne and fell plump in the pond. Bah! <laughs> Be bad, Yertle. And today the great Yertle, that marvelous he, is king of the mud. That is all he can see. And the turtles, of course, are turtles. They're all free, as turtles and maybe all creature, all creatures should be. It's a good story. Now, one that I really enjoy. I think one that a lot of people could benefit from. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what you are. But there's some uh, value in this, this story. See if you can figure it out. It's applicable all over, everywhere, little ones. Wherever you go, you can see this. This one's called The Zax. The Zax is awesome. One day, making tracks in the prairie of Prax, came a north-going Zax and a south-going Zax. See, there they go. North, south. Heading towards each other, it looks like. Hmm. And it happened that both of them came to a place where they bumped. There they stood, foot to foot, face to face. Look here now, the north going Zax said. I say you are blocking my path. You are right in my way. I'm going north. I always go north. Get out of my way and let me go forth. So the north Zax, he always goes north. That's what he does. Who's in whose way, snapped the south-going Zax. I always go south, making south-going tracks. So you're in my way, and I ask you to move, and let me go south in my south-going groove. Then the north-going Zax puffed his chest up with pride. I never, he said, take a step to one side. I'll prove it to you. I won't change my ways if I have to keep standing here for 59 days. So these two dudes are arguing because one goes one direction, one goes the other. And whether, rather than working with one another, they just are going to stand there. Because that's what they do. Hmm. Just think about that. That's all I'm saying. And I'll prove to you, yelled the South Going Zax, that I can stand here in the prairie of Prax for 59 years, for I live by a rule that I learned as a boy in South Going School. Never budge, that's my rule. Never budge in the least. Not an inch to the west, not an inch to the east. I'll stay here not budging. I can and I will if it makes you and me in the whole world stand still. Okay. See what I'm saying? He's mad because he goes south. But, you know, he learned in school, never budge. But he's going to sit there for 59 years. And he doesn't care what happens because the world's just going to stop because that's what he does. And that's what the other one does. 
Well, of course, the world didn't stand still. The world grew. In a couple of years, the new highway came through, and they built it right over those two stubborn Zacks and left them there standing unbudged in their tracks. So, the world kept going, and those two Zacks just stood there looking at each other to be right, to have their way. Hmm. And that's that. Short story but very important. Remember folks, don't be a north going Zax or a south going Zax. Take a step to the east or the west if you have to. There's nothing wrong with working with someone. And those are our stories. Remember, check out the math video. See if you can do some of those math problems. I think that we're going to try to figure out a way to keep track of who does what. Uh, just because I think it'll be kind of fun, be kind of a challenge, and like I said, a sneak peek into something maybe. So, hope you all have a great day, and remember, got a book book, uh, book suggestion, let me know. I'm running out of ideas, although I love these ones today, so hope you did too. Have a great day.